Well, if you have your Bibles uh, or your device, uh, if you'll turn to Genesis. Well, I'm going to run through a lot of scriptures. I'll give you the scriptures I'm going to run through. Um, we, we talked about this last week a little bit, and I do want to uh, relay some foundation. Um, Genesis chapter 1, we said this, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus was in the beginning. Okay, Jesus, that's, me, that's John chapter 1. Uh, John chapter 1, the, the beginning, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay, uh, we, we saw this in Genesis chapter 1. Uh, how did God create heaven and the earth and everything in them by his word? Everything was created by the word of God. Uh, John 1.1 1, 1 says that Jesus, look at that word word in John 1.1. 1, 1, the word W-O-R-D is capitalized because it's personified. Jesus is called living word. We, we know that. But everything was created by the living word. Now, it wasn't just it wasn't just that God spoke at one time and God stopped speaking. Because God still speaks. Think about that. Wouldn't that be weird if, uh, if we created our children by speaking, and then once they are born and we, we, we put everything in their life, bottles and milk and diapers, then we stop speaking. We stop creating. We stopped using the primary ability to create. Wouldn't it be weird if we just stopped? It wouldn't be weird. It doesn't make sense. If you, are, if you have ability, you, you, you use that ability. You function in who you are. Well, God functions in who he is. He, he functioned in who he was at creation. He was a creator. Well, because God hasn't changed, he is a creator. And so he still functions in who he is. Does, does that make sense? I mean, I, mean, you know, I, ask, I ask people all the time, was God a creator or is he a creator? And, and, and I think sometimes people hesitate to say it, but he is. He still is a creator. Well, then John explains it even further that it wasn't just words coming out of God's mouth, but Jesus is the living word. And so Jesus had a function at creation, and Jesus has a function today. Jesus has a function today, okay? Uh, in Luke chapter 1, in Luke chapter 1, uh, let's see, let me get there real quick myself. Luke chapter 1 is another place because uh, this is a good spot. I know, it's, I know this is, uh, uh, we are past uh, Christmas, but this is, even though it's part of the Christmas story, Luke chapter 1 um, and verse 34, Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? The angel comes and tells her uh, that you're going to have a baby, the Christ child, the Messiah, the Redeemer. And she says, well, how can this be since I do not know a man? The angel answered and said to her, uh, the Holy Spirit uh, shall be upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now, indeed, Elizabeth, your uh, relative, she is also conceived in her old age. That is now the sixth month of her who was called barren. Now, I want you to look at verse 37. It says here, for with God, nothing is impossible. That's what I want to zone in on this morning. With God, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. We read, I, I quoted that scripture in 2 Kings chapter 7, uh, where that, that passage where there was an impossible situation. And Israel was surrounded. Their, their overwhelming enemy was surrounding the entire uh, palace, or not palace, but the city, the walled city. Uh, there, there's no way. They, they could not see a way. Okay, they could not see how this was going to happen. However, God did the impossible. God, matter of fact, they were ridiculing the prophet for saying that, oh, well, if God can make windows of heaven, maybe that'll happen. If God can do this, if God can do that. I think what happened over time uh, for a thousand years or however long we've had Bibles, not well, when was it, 1600, 1600 or 1500 when, when they started printing Bibles for everybody else. Um, you know, I think a lot of times we, we've looked at the Old Testament, looked at them as great stories, uh, great morals, uh, equip as you may. But you'll notice that you'll, I hear people quote um, a lot of authors, and then they'll also quote the Bible. Listen, authors are great. I appreciate authors. But, but what we've done is we've reduced the Bible to just another literary book, 
And instead of a book that teaches truths or models the nature and ability of God. And so I think a lot of times when we see the Old Testament things that happen, uh, we look at things like that and we were like, oh, well, God doesn't do that anymore. It's a great, sto great story. Great story, but God really didn't do that anymore. Now, we will never say that, but because we've never seen a lot of stuff, and which I've seen a lot of stuff, we've seen a lot of stuff, then we kind of chalk it up to, you know, um, you know, when, uh, when, when during praise and worship, uh, something that kind of dropped in my spirit was uh, when Moses came um, to deliver. I mean, this is supernatural stuff. I mean, here Moses was running, basically, from being arrested by, the, 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 by Pharaoh. You know, he murdered a guy. And, and, and should have been, you know, probably get your law back then, you know, your eye for an eye instead of you get killed if you kill someone. And it was unjust what Moses did. So Moses takes off, and all of a sudden he's in the backside of the desert, and all of a sudden the bush is burning, and the bush is burning, but it's not burning. You know what I'm saying? It's burning, but it's not being consumed. And so uh, Moses looks to see what in the world is this. Uh, and then as Moses turns to see it, then uh, the Lord, not not God wasn't a bush, but you know through the through that situation began to speak. So in other words, God had to get Moses' attention, and then once Moses' attention was got was got was gotten, yeah, uh, you know I'm not, a, I'm not sorry, I've never never said I know grammar, okay? Uh, and so and, and evidently I don't know math very well either because this stuff we're learning is crazy. And so the kids, you know, so anyhow, anyhow, so he got his attention, he's talking to him, and so that was that was freaky enough as it is. You see, we forget the freaky things, the weird, non-normal things in the Old Testament. And so we don't think God can do freaky, non-normal things right now. You know what I'm saying? And so, but God can, and He does. Maybe it's not been in, in our circles and in our, our life, or maybe in our connections, but He's never stopped doing crazy things. And that's why a lot of times we, we don't believe the supernatural or we don't believe the impossible because it's just not a normal thing. You know what I'm saying? And so God tells him, go, you know, tell my people this and then we'll deliver them and you're going to free them from their slavery, all that stuff. Well, first of all, that's nuts that God will tell him that because my first thought would be, God, don't you know if I go back there, they're going to kill me? They are going to arrest me and execute me for what I did. I mean, that's common sense. And you know, God wants us to use common sense now, doesn't he? Listen, common sense is what we use until God interrupts things. <laughs> and when God interrupts things, then common sense goes out the door. Or listen, when we say, well, you know, we still got to use wisdom. Okay, what people are actually saying is we got to use common sense. And I agree, you use common sense until God overrides that common sense. And God overrides the natural because he does it often. And we're, we're, we just got to get used to it. We just got to get used to that overriding thing. So he tells Moses, go out here and, 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 and go to Pharaoh. Tell him, let my people go. You know, honestly, if I were Moses, I'd be like, God, look, it's real simple. You're God. I'm, I'm Moses. I'm, there's no need for me to go and converse with Pharaoh and tell him to let you. Why don't you just drop the bomb, man? Drop the bomb. Just, just do it. Bammo. Just wipe them all out and free your people. You know, God has ability. He can't do that. But God has purpose, he has procedure, and he has plan. And listen to this. God always uses a person to fulfill his will on the earth. Remember that verse in Jesus' prayer, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He functions on earth through earth beings. Uh, Psalms, I believe it's chapter, well, I forgot what chapter it was. But in the book of Psalms, it says uh, 818, I believe. Um, uh, the, uh, the heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he gave to the sons of man. It's in Psalms somewhere. And so he gave the earth to us to function on his behalf, by his direction, by his ability on, on the earth. Okay? All right, so back to Mo Moses over here. So here's Moses. Uh, he goes over to Pharaoh. And, you know, if God tells me to tell someone to do something, then I would assume if I give that word, things are automatic. I mean, wouldn't you? I mean, I just heard from God, and I'm telling you, God just told me to let the people go. And so I'm just going to say this. If, if God said me to say that, then I would automatically assume it should happen right away. And so when Moses went over there, if it were me, and all of a sudden I get there, I tell people, uh, you know, tell Pharaoh, let my people go, and because I got that from God, right? But then when the people don't let go, when Pharaoh, you know, I'm going to say, okay, God, well, God what's happening? Are you, you, am I hearing right or not? You know, listen, you're hearing God or you're not hearing God. 
Our daily life, our daily time with God will let us know what we're hearing. What we're, thank God for it. Thank God for our hearing, but our daily time. So he goes, and of course, you know, the whole stick on the ground, turn to a snake, and all that kind of stuff happens. And, and then Pharaoh's guys, uh, you know, the Bible names those two magicians that throw through the snakes on the ground, or the sticks on the ground, turn to snakes. And then Moses' snake, serpent, eat, it, eat up those snakes. And then he picked up his rod, and that snake turned back to a stick again, or a rod, okay? So Moses leaves and comes back, you know, and then it's in all. So how many plagues were there, like nine plagues or something like that? I forgot how many plagues. But you would assume that if, if God said this, that he wouldn't have to go through all this junk. That everything would just be just like this. Let me give you a verse real quick. And this verse, uh, let's look at, uh, where did it go? Um, let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. Yeah, 2 Timothy chapter 2. And this is, verse, uh, this is verse 3 and 4. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangles himself in the affairs of life that he may please him uh, who hath, so that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Now, look at this ugly word in verse th uh, 3, endure hardness. Endure hardness. Do you know that there are times that we go through where we just don't see victories right away? But we have a promise. But we have a promise. Do you know if Moses did not know the voice of God and wasn't sure of what he heard, I believe he would have got discouraged after Pharaoh's first no and walked away. Now, now, maybe he would endure a little persecution from Pharaoh and come back for the second no. And maybe the third no. How many no's or, or how many obstacles or roadblocks does it take for us to doubt the Word of God? How many? That's a big question. How many road, natural roadblocks does it take for us to doubt the Word of God? You can write this down, Psalms 105. Verses, I'm going to read 17 through 19. 105, 17 through 19. It says, He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet were hurt with fetters, who was laid in irons until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord proved him. Now I want you to see this. The word of the Lord proved him. So now let's talk about dreaming Joseph. Dreaming Joseph, because we talked about Moses. Moses, he went to Pharaoh most likely eight or nine times. I, I didn't look it up last night. It's just, you know, eight or nine times. And he, ten, ten, thank you very much. Ten times, okay? And ten times Mo, Mo, Pharaoh said no, or not, whatever. And so here's the, but he came back. Why? Because he had a word. And so do you back down if you have a word from God? You don't. This was King David or, or Shepherd Boy David's irritation and frustration at the king and the mighty army of Israel when they were afraid of a, a giant, the whole army, the whole army of Israel afraid of one man, one giant, and David goes out there and his statement was this, is there not a word? The King James uses the word cause, but it's the word debar, which is the word W-O-R-D. David says, is there not a word? Last year, now listen, this is where we're, we're seeing the failure of common religion. Last year, hopefully we've seen this because what we saw was people afraid of a virus. Why would we be afraid of a virus? Because we don't have an answer. If you don't have an answer to something, then be very afraid. However, David had an answer, and it was his, his protection rights from God. You see, we have an answer, and his name is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. Psalms 103, 1 through 5, it begins in verse 2 by saying, Forget not all his benefits. You see, I believe when that was written, David, David's sitting there thinking, 
Man, I remember when I was going out there to check on my brothers, and they were uh, and they were all afraid of a giant. And I have, I have, I'm the only one that had the promise, and all these people didn't have the promise. And so you and I, it doesn't matter who we are, where, what's going on in our lives. The reality is very simply this: we have a promise. We have a word. David said, do, do, do you not have a word? Do you not have a word? So back to this right here. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold as servant, uh, whose fetters were, or feet were in fetters, you know, those irons and those chains and all that kind of stuff. And it says, until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. I think, I think it was about 24 years from the time Joseph had his dream until the time that dream came to pass. Now, uh, people say, can God speak through a dream? God can speak through a dream, and the devil can speak through a dream. Okay. Now, when God speaks to, through a dream, that really is a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom. God can speak a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom through a dream. So here's Joseph. He gets this dream uh, that he's going to be you know, uh, a big wig somewhere, and then his brothers and family will bow to him. Uh, and so, of course, that, that was ridiculous. That was nuts. And you know, when his brothers beat him and threw him into a pit... You know, he could have easily thought, well, this is over. It's done. That we're, we're all done here. But the reality is, if you hang on to the Word of God, no matter what the natural situation looks, that Word from God will come to pass. And so he had, that Word tried him. Now, I'll give you a good, a, another passage. Uh, if you remember the parable of the sower sowing the Word. Uh, I believe in Luke, it says, the, sow, the seed is the Word of God. The seed is the word of God. It says, as soon as the seed is sown, or as soon as the word of God is given, immediately the enemy comes for what? He comes to steal the word. Now, he's trying to steal the prophetic word or the written word. Where? From your heart. From your heart. So immediately, as soon as Joseph receives his word, and he's all excited, and he's blabbing his word, you know, there are some words I believe we should keep to ourselves Speak it out and war a good warfare by, by the prophetic words. But maybe maybe at the house, in our bedroom for a while, uh, until it's time to release some of these words. Uh, maybe that would have gave him a shortcut until the next season. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he could have bypassed all that junk he went through. And so, so he gets thrown into a pit. His brothers want to kill him. But then one brother says, don't kill him. Hey, there's some Ishmaelite slave traders. Sell him to the slaves. Sell him as a slave. So he sold him as a slave. Goes into slavery, but thank God he gets sold into Potiphar's house. Potiphar was, is one of the governors there in, uh, in, in, uh, in Egypt. Uh, and then he, he gets in there, he's serving in there, and things are great. Uh, the Bible says he was the top dog in Potiphar's house. Well, then all of a sudden he gets accused. Everyone say accused. Mm -hmm. He wasn't doing anything sexual. He got accused of doing something sexual. And all of a sudden, he is thrown in jail. No, no jury, no judge, no jury, just thrown in jail. And that was over for him. You know, now he's in jail. Okay. Well, that looks like the end also. You see, there's, there's going to be enough times in our life where things look like the end. We, we've got we to get used to things looking like the end, but God's word still prevailing. How, how about that? We've got to get used to that. So what I'm saying is we, we got to get used to not paying attention to what's happening around us. we got to get used to giving our attention only to the Word of God. Only to what God said. And so here, he's in, Potter, he's in the jail now, and everyone else is getting out. He interprets two more dreams. Two, one guy gets out. One guy gets executed. And, you know, he's thinking, I just, I just, I just gave these guys interpretation of these dreams. Surely someone's going to give me a hookup. Well, it came later when Pharaoh had his dream, and, and, and of course, Joseph interpreted it. Long story short, he is the second in command of the nation of Egypt. What am I saying here? He had to endure hardship as a good soldier. He had to endure trials and junk until he fulfilled that word of God, until the word of God came to pass. The problem is... A lot of times we short circuit at the first sign of persecution. And we automatically will say, oh, well, maybe, I guess that wasn't God after all. When we know it's God, there is no backing off. When we have a word on it, it just doesn't matter. 
Uh, you know, two years ago, we had a storm in the spring. Well, it wasn't spring, it was summer, really. It was, uh, school had been out for about a week uh, because the, uh, some of the staff were still down the street at the school, and this tornado was coming in. And uh, just, I, of course, I'm a certified storm spotter, and here we had my phone was blowing up with, with uh, weather alerts. And then one of my friends who, uh, who we took the storm spotter class together, she was texting me because the, the latest update was it was in the Union Valley area, and which is just north of me. And so I'm thinking, oh, I need to go. I'm going to go look at my back porch and look to the north uh, and, and see if I can see it. You know, I, I love weather. Weather's fun. You know, we're supposed to have a, a nice little weather event this evening. And so hope my kids are hoping for snow. You know, a little one-inch prediction, you know what I mean? And so anyhow, so here we, we were out there. My friend and I, uh, we're just standing out there. And it's raining heavy. It's windy. A uh, little bit of pea size hail. Not much at all, really. And then all, so I'm looking to the, the north. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, I, can, I can feel the wind. Instead of the wind coming at me, it was sucking or going away. So I told my friend John, I said, John, I said, you that's the suck. That's, that's, just good. that's the intake. I said, so, so if, if the wind is going this direction, then that means the intake over there, I said, there would be up. Oh, and there it was. Kind of in the west. And you can see, you can see it was on the ground. And it was it was just, you know, it was kind of there. Well, because the weather, the warning was for Union Valley, I'm thinking it's going north, nor uh, pardon me, it's going uh, east, northeast. Uh, and so I'm looking at it, and then I realize, wait a minute, that is not going that way. It's actually coming straight at, at us. And so, so I had to determine something, okay? Now, now we, we are human beings, but we have a supernatural God. And one of the things that we recognize is Jesus never prayed about a storm. What did Jesus do to a storm? He spoke to it. He spoke to it. And so when this tornado was headed to us, my first thought was, uh, no, it doesn't have the right to. Now, that, that would be stupid to most people, but that's okay. I've been called stupid before. Um, but as it came closer, I, I started speaking to it, started speaking to the thing. Jesus spoke to a fig tree. He spoke to wind. He spoke to waves. So I just started speaking to the thing. Now, now you have to come to this point in your life where you really believe what you believe or else you better run to the closet or the bathtub. Now, I ain't got no bathtubs in my house. We, we built a gigantic shower uh, in, in lieu of a bathtub, you know what I'm saying? And so, uh, so we had no bathtubs. We, we might have some you know, inner walls, I guess, a closet or whatever. Uh, but at the same time, our house is older. And so, uh, you know, it's pure and beam. And so you have to get, I had to understand, do I really believe this thing? Well, when this storm was not obeying, when it wasn't listening, but it got to my neighbor's other fence line, I had two emotions I could have. I could have, oh darn, let's get out of here. I could have fear, or, or if I really believe this thing, then I'll have the other one, which I had the other one. Uh, and it was, I was ticked. I was mad because it has not listened just yet. Now, I, was, I, I would run to the edge of my, my, car, my, my patio cover because I hate getting wet. I just I don't like being wet, y'all. I just don't like it. I don't like being wet. I don't like being cold and wet. Uh, I just don't like being wet. You know what I'm saying? And so listen, when I was younger, I really wanted to be in the military, but I can endure a lot of stuff. You know what I couldn't endure? Cold and wet. I just don't, I don't want to be. And they're going to send me out on a mission and make me be cold and wet, and I'm going to have to say no, and they're going to kick me out, and that's going to be it. Cold and wet. And so anyhow... So as it gets closer, I'm, I'm, I'm at the edge. You know, I wanted to run out there so bad, but I just didn't want to get wet. And so as it gets to my neighbor's fence line, it finally began to rise up a little bit. And then as it crosses their property, you know, because my property is narrow and long, it gets to my fence line, it gets, it gets higher. And by the time it came over the house, it was completely over the house. And you can see it was a wild thing. We got up on the carport. Oh, there it is right there. What I'm saying is this. We have got to get to the place in our lives where we know what God said is true. So that when we're standing at a place of danger or death, your faith in God will see you through. Not presumption. Because if I'm, not presu if I'm presumptuous, if I'm doing it out of strong, well, you just got a strong will, Mike. I got a strong will. That is not my personality, strong will. That's my why. That is not my personality. 
But when I know that I know that I know, when you know that you know that you know, you understand like David did that, wait a minute, I have a word from God that says that no weapon formed against me will prosper, Isaiah 54, 17. I have a word from God in Psalms 91. I have a word from God in Psalms 103 that my life is redeemed from destruction. I have a word that says that this man will go down. And if you and I will begin to get used to staring face to face, eye to eye, nose to nose, smelling the breath of your enemy, and it not phase you one bit, you'll begin to see God's ability working stronger and stronger in your life. What am I saying today? You see, old religion, the Bible warned us, don't be taken by man's wisdom, but in the power of God. Yet we don't see demonstration of the power of God, so we have to get used to eloquent speakers. We have to get used to being entertained. But what God is showing us now is, listen, Everything is done by the Word of God. I functioned by the Word of God, and I still function by my words. And if you and I will begin to get to know God by His Word, we'll begin to see things greater in our lives. And listen, I don't care what things look like. I don't care what's happening around us. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, I'll never forget, we had, we had a big debt. We had $5,000. We needed $5,000 uh, in two days. It was, it was New Year's. Um, I remember. I remember the kids were still little, but little enough to understand that we were weird. Um, and so, and I'll explain that in a minute. So we get there. We get to the post office, and I made a decision. I wasn't gonna fret because God said that He'll meet all my needs according to His riches and glory. His name, El Shaddai, means All Sufficient One. Jehovah Jireh means the Lord my provider. And so I stood on that and I would sing, I would make my own praises because I had to get the, the reality out of my mind that I needed $4,000 in two days and I had $400, okay? So we go to the post office. Now, yeah, I had to fight this. I had to fight what was in front of my face. I had to fight this. So I get to the post office and uh, I go to the, you know, so we didn't receive mail at our house. And I go to the to P.O. box and, uh, well, I had, yeah, I go to the P.O. box and I, I go in there and there was a check for $5,000. Now, this is, the, this is the great thing. Thank, thank God I had time because this was, uh, this was the, the first, I believe, of the year. And it just happened to be, the you, know, our, you can get your post office box stuff without, you know, it being open. Well, I couldn't. The bank was closed that day, so I had to wait till the next day. So I got to the bank the next day. I put the check in there. Everything wound up clearing, and I paid that bill. So I had, not, I had the $4,000 for the bill, but then also had the tithe on that just as well. Let me tell you something. I had no idea how I was going to get there. It was a lady that doesn't go to our church, wasn't a member of our church. She, she popped in twice, over, three times over the past umpteen years, and that was it, sent us a check for $5,000. I had no idea to count on that. What I was counting on was what God said. I was counting on what he said. I counted on what this said. I counted on what his name says. I counted on what his reputation was. We've got to get back to knowing God intimately to where we know his reputation. Not just hear about God or know about God, but know him for ourselves. Know him as protector, know him as healer, know him as provider, know him as our peace, know him as all the, our redeemer. We, we may know him as our redeemer, you know, but we got to know him as everything else. It's time to get to know God so we can trust what he says no matter what's going on around us. Amen. Let's stand. We saw Moses. Man, Moses, he, he, he had every opportunity to say, you know what, God? No way. No way. I'm out of here. You know, tell, tell his boys, hey, guys, Joshua, uh, Caleb, uh, you know, I, I missed it. I, 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 guess, I guess I missed God. Just because a little bit of, of opposition comes, comes his way. Uh, you know, I'm glad Joseph didn't, didn't quit, quit believing just because opposition came his way. I mean, think about Jesus, all the opposition he, he had. Paul, Paul had opposition. 
but they, they didn't quit. They had a word from God. Do you have a word today? You listen, there are words that, that God has spoken prophetically uh, in, in my life for 20 years, and I'm seeing things come to pass. There are things that were spoken 15 years, 13 years ago that are coming to pass this year, that started last year. Man, I'm telling you what, you know, the, the biggest thing I think we have to recognize is nothing is old anymore. God has new things he's wanting to do for us and say to us. God doesn't even want to look at you and I the same way he looked at us last year. He wants to see us in a new light, but he wants you and I to see ourselves in a different light as well. And so I believe today, if we'll begin to keep God's word only in our lives, at the forefront of our lives, at the forefront of our speaking, at the forefront of our thinking, I believe we'll begin to see everything God said come to pass in our life. Amen? Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, I thank you that you are our God. Lord, you're not just a figment of our imagination, a, a, a theological uh, thing, but Father, you are real. And Lord, you want to be even more real to us. Lord, I thank you that your written word is real and we take you at your word. But Father, I thank you that your prophetic word is real also because Lord, you still speak today. Lord, for edification, for encouragement, and for comfort. Why would you speak prophetically? To edify or to build up, to encourage and to comfort. That's why you would speak. And every word that you would speak prophetically would be to build up, to encourage, to comfort. Lord, to bring correction, to bring increase in every area. And so, Father, I thank you for those words spoken. And, Lord, just because there might be a little bit of opposition, Lord, just because there might be a, a, a mid-amount of opposition, God, just because there's a whole lot of opposition, we're not going to back off on what you said. We will establish ourselves on your written word. We will, we will establish ourselves on your prophetic word. And Father, we believe we will see victories in every area of our life. Father, I thank you that this year will be a, a, a year like no other. I thank you for the, the words that we shared last week of, of your prophets that were spoken over this year. And I thank you that things will begin to increase to a greater dimension in a greater way. Father, we make the vow today that we will keep our eyes fixed, fixed on you by fixing it on your word and on the word that's spoken. Lord, we declare that we will guard what comes in our eye gates and our ear gates because that affects our thinking, which affects our believing. And Father, today I believe things will change, will come to a higher dimension in our lives. Father, I thank you this year will be a year of debt freedom for many. God, I thank you that people will experience your overwhelming abundance in a new way. Uh, and Lord, that's your way of showing us how much you love us. So Father, I thank you for that now in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, as I was saying that about, about God showing his overwhelming love, um, there's a verse in the Bible that says this, The goodness of God leads men to repentance. The goodness of God. Religion says hard things lead people to repentance. But the Bible says the goodness of God. You see, when God does something supernatural in my life, my response is, is very what I would call normal. And that's, wow, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe you did this for me. Because I'm not very special, y'all. And I'm not Mr. Perfect. And so when God does things for you and I, it is say, oh, thank you. wow, thank you. God, I, in my spirit, Rosa, God wants to do things for you and I just because he wants to show us how much he loves us. Not because we're so perfect or we're so special, because we're, we're not. We're just his kids is all we are, which we're, you know, he loves that. But what I'm saying is, is if we'll begin to believe that God wants to do great things for us, we'll begin to see it in a supernatural way. Amen?